Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Techno's product review. It seems like nearly everyone has been chomping at the bits to get their hands on one of these ever since I did a four-part series about this very special solar generator this past summer. It's big, it's mean, it's smart, and it's been juiced up on steroids. If you crossed Arnold Schwarzenegger with a Swiss Army knife and a Battleborn battery, you either end up with the Terminator in ICU or you'd have one of these. It's the new Blue Eddy AC200P. And what does the P stand for? I have no idea. I looked all over this thing for the butter dispenser and I didn't find it, so I don't think it stands for popcorn. Hmm, maybe it stands for phosphate. You know, as in lithium iron phosphate. You know, that ultra safe battery chemistry that everybody raves about that you can charge and discharge thousands of times, last more than a decade. Hmm, let's find out. So, what comes in the box, or should I say bag? Well, let's see. Oh, look at that, two years warranty. In bold, they want you to know that it has a warranty. So here's your warranty card and the manual, which of course we're going to review quickly. Now this is an aviation plug, so that's what they call it, it's an aviation plug. This is for the input of the Blue Eddy and the solar input, and it comes with an XT90 adapter. And that XT90 plugs into this MC4 to XT90, for example. Now you can plug your solar panels into the Blue Eddy, and it comes with a cigarette lighter cord accessory cable for a vehicle. So you can charge it from 12 or 24 volts. And again, plugs right in like that, and they both go into the solar input. And what else do you get? This tiny little wall charger brick. Now why is this thing so humongous? It is because it can put out 411 watts. So let's check out the manual. Safety, who needs that? So it comes with these eight items to start with, and then you can actually buy these separately down the road. You got the battery clamps, you got the output cables for the 25 amp DC output, you got a trolley, and a carrying bag. They explain the five different ways to charge, from a wall outlet, from solar, from a car, from a generator, and from an external lead acid battery. And for all the nerds out there, here are the specifications. And here is page two of the specifications. Note here that like all lithium batteries, you can't charge it below freezing, but you can actually discharge it below freezing. And that's all she wrote. Specifications. The Blue Eddy AC200P sports a 2000 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery rated at over 3000 cycles to 80% capacity. What does that mean? That means you can discharge and charge this 3000 times before you lose the top 20% of the battery capacity. That doesn't mean you throw it away. That means you just lose the top 20%. And it'll last you, under most conditions, well over a decade. Size and weight, this is 16 and a half by 11 by 15.2 inches and weighs in at 61 pounds. Now this is four pounds more than the Indiegogo version, which was 1700 watt hours. Now, as for the display, it is a class-leading touchscreen display, which you can touch it and do all kinds of different cool things. This has more settings than you'll ever know what to do with in most cases. You can get down to the really nitty-gritty on just about anything that has to do with input or output on this. It even has a BMS monitor that'll tell you the exact voltage of every cell inside. Now, what kind of use is that? I don't know, but you got it. As for the inverter size, this thing rocks a whopping 2,000 watt pure sign inverter with a 4,800 watt surge and can run up to 2,500 watts for two minutes. This has six three-prong 20 amp outlets. You're not gonna be short on power with this thing. Of course, anything of this caliber nowadays is gonna have an MPPT solar controller in it, which means it's gonna charge really fast from solar. And we'll demonstrate that here in a little bit. Now, Bluetti claims this has five ways to charge. So let's go over each one of these. First method is from AC wall outlet. You can use the factory charger that comes with it, which charges at 400 watts. That'll charge us from dead. 
in just under five hours. Now you can also plug it into a 12 or 24 volt vehicle and it's gonna take about 16 hours to charge this from dead from a 12 volt vehicle or about eight hours from a 24 volt vehicle. And if you plug the maximum 700 watts of solar into this, you can charge in under four hours. And the last two methods are from gas generator. So you could charge this, of course, from a gas or propane or diesel generator. That takes the same speed as charging from a wall outlet. And you can also charge this from a 12 volt battery. And that takes about as long as it would from a 12 volt car. But wait, I'm gonna show you a trick in a little bit where you can charge this in under two hours. As for DC outputs on this, you have the typical 12 volt cigarette lighter output. Now this is regulated at 13.4 volts and rated at 10 amps, so you get about 130 watts out of it. And then beneath that, you have these two 5.5 millimeter outputs that are rated at three amps. Those are also regulated. But the big output on this is a whopping 25 amp output that allows you to charge DC devices over 300 watts. You can use this output Wire it into a fuse box, run your max air fans, LED lights, your refrigerators, stuff like that can all be done off this 25 amp output. Now you do need a special cable that you have to order from Blue Eddy to do this because it does not come with that. But if you were on the Indiegogo campaign for the AC200, that cable will work on the AC200P. So this comes out of the box, ready to go to power all your 12 volt needs in your DIY van build or camper. So you have five USB outputs on this total. You have a 60 watt power delivery port that's USB-C, and then you have these four standard USB-A outputs. Note that there is no quick charge ports on the Blue Eddy. So on the top of the Blue Eddy, you actually have two 15 watt wireless charging pads, so you can charge two devices at a time wirelessly. Other features? This can simultaneously charge from AC and DC at the same time. So in other words, you can charge it from an AC wall outlet and solar or AC wall outlet and a 12 volt battery. And we're gonna go ahead and demonstrate this in a moment. And this does have UL certification, so you don't have to worry about anything catching fire in your rig. And what review would be complete without me taking this into my secret laboratory to perform all kinds of experiments on it. Final results, Blue Eddy AC200P, 1,576 watt hours, 123 amp hours, total discharge time, 15 hours, 22 minutes. As you can see from the results, 1,576 watt hours, which is a respectable 78%, 5% better than the AC200 from Indiegogo. You're also getting 350 watt hours more battery out of the 2,000 watt hour version. Note that the bottom 10% of the battery is reserved to protect the battery from damage. So that's about 200 watt hours right there. We can justify that 200 watt hours. And then there's another 225 watt hours that's missing. And I'm guessing that's due to the regulation circuitry. Because if you look at the power consumption chart of a low DC load, this consumes about 15 watts background power and multiply that by the 15 hours that it took to run the test, and you get almost exactly 224 watt hours. Now, Blue Eddy said the DC outputs on this are unchanged from the AC200, so I don't need to cover this again. If you wanna see the nitty gritty details of those tests, the links are in the description below with the four other videos I did on the AC200. It goes into exhausting detail as every port on this I tested thoroughly and you can see those results in those videos. The results of those tests state that the 25 amp output can actually put out 27 amps, and the 10 amp output can actually put out 10 and a half amps before shutting down. And as mentioned, all the 12 volt on this is regulated at 13.4 volts. So it's perfectly fine for any 12 volt appliance. And we did a pure sine wave check originally, and that showed that it is rock solid at 120 volts, 60 hertz. All right, we're under 800 watts of load, and the sine wave is untouched. As for the inverter capacity test, I did decide to retest this because I knew there were a few minor changes from the prototype unit I originally had. I wanted to make sure everything was still legit. 
Now, Bluetti has told me they haven't changed the inverter from the 200 to the 200P, but the first prototype AC200 I ever had, I blew up with the solar degenerator. In fact, it was the first solar generator that I blew up with this, so I am always kind of sketchy about doing this test because I'm going to be pushing this inverter up and above 2,000 watts using the solar degenerator and a hairdryer to get past that 2,000 watts. But hey, I did this for the Leoc, which had a 2,000 watt inverter in it. I better do the same test for this one. So let's cross our fingers. I don't blow anything up and let's try it. Now I'm quite confident that we're not gonna blow this thing up, but you never know. So I'm gonna start with the solar degenerator first. You can watch the wattage up here. It should be similar to down here. I'm just doing this so it's easier for you to see on camera. So let's go ahead and start this. We're gonna start it with no heat and work our way up to maximum. 1400 watts. And now let's go ahead and run the hair dryer, which is an additional 1875. We'll start on low. Now we're pulling 2070 there, and it says 2170 here, so 100 more watts. I don't know if you guys can even see that. Right there, we're pulling 2100 watts. Now we're able to pull over 2100 watts. That's impressive. Let's see how long we can do it before it shuts down. Now, we should be able to get at least three minutes to five minutes at that kind of load before the inverter says, hey, it's getting too hot in here and shuts it down. But let's see, because I'm curious to compare this to the inverter test that I did for the AC200 to see really is there any difference or not. So far, it seems like it's handling more than the other one. But we'll go ahead and continue it. We're going to watch this temperature here. It says it's only 75 degrees for the inverter. So, okay, let's go with it. Solar degenerator to maximum. We're going to start the stopwatch. Okay, just stop at two minutes. Now, what I noticed is that the inverter wasn't getting hot at all. It only got to like 87 degrees Fahrenheit. So... Let's hope that it still works. I am not seeing it turn back on. So there's DC on. AC is not coming back on. Man, don't tell me I fried it because this is a really nice power station, and if I fry the AC inverter, that pretty much makes it useless. Okay, I think what I'll do is just turn it off and back on again. Hello, IT. Have you tried turning this off and on again? Let's cross our fingers that the inverter is not shot. Two minutes at 2200 watts. It shouldn't have fried it. So, let's find out. Nope, inverter's no good. Oh, wait a minute, it's back. <sighs> Talk about panic. I wanna keep this forever, and I was really stressing that out, because when I hit AC on and it didn't come on right away, it took a few seconds, I was panicking, thinking, I blew up another one solar degenerator does it again, but it just overheated and shut down, which is what a proper inverter should do. So there's no problems with this inverter. It's able to do 2200 watts for two minutes before it overloaded. Yeah, you'll be able to do a lot of microwaving with this. So you can plug your microwave into this, run it for probably two straight hours, no problem. You're running a 5,000 BTU air conditioner, which takes around 500 watts. You can expect four hours of battery time for an air conditioner. Now, of course, if you're putting 700 watts of solar in during the day, you can essentially run the air conditioner all day long, as long as you have sun. And this is pretty much what I did this last summer in Tucson. I didn't use the AC200, I used Battleborn batteries, but the same concept applies. 
if you're running a 500 watt air conditioner and you got 700 watts of solar coming in, then you're making up the difference. You have, you have extra power to charge your batteries while you're running the air conditioner. And you could do the same exact thing with this. If you can get the 700 watt maximum solar on this and an air conditioner runs 500 watts, then as long as the sun's shining, you got free air conditioning. And speaking of air conditioners, I do have two air conditioners downstairs I could demonstrate on this. However, it's winter time and I'm up in the mountains. It's below 60 degrees outside right now. I couldn't get those compressors to kick on anyway. So unfortunately, I can't demonstrate air conditioners on this. If you wanna see air conditioners and RVs and all kinds of stuff running on this, watch the original AC200 review that I did this last summer because I actually ran two RVs on this with air conditioners and refrigerators all at the same time and this thing took it. So what can the AC200 power? Everything. Everything at your campsite. Now, that might be a slight exaggeration, but I'm gonna prove to you, this thing is really powerful. And how am I gonna do so? I'm gonna power both of our RVs at the same time on this little box. And the air conditioners are running right now, refrigerators are running right now. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this, plug it into the Blue Eddy and see what happens. So there you have it. It's running just over 1400 watts to power two RVs, two air conditioners, and five refrigerators. So I'm hoping you enjoyed this drama as much as I did. Now I need to go have a clinky. As for the max charge rate test, I did demonstrate a lot of ways to charge this in the original review, from running over a thousand watts of solar to using dual chargers. Now I'll quickly demonstrate this amazing feature again of using dual chargers to charge this thing at over 1100 watts. For those of you who have not watched my four videos on the predecessor to this, the regular AC200, you can go back and watch those for a lot of the details I'm gonna skip. I'm gonna cover now some of the main features of this. I'm gonna demonstrate them quickly so that we can kind of get through this video and not make it 45 minutes long. So one of the coolest features of the Blue 80 AC200 and obviously in the AC200P, is the fact that you can charge it with two AC wall chargers at the same time and double the charging speed. Now here we have two chargers now. The Blue Eddy only comes with one charger, but you can actually buy a second charger from them. And then you need to make sure that on the Blue Eddy itself, you have it set to PV charging, because this isn't gonna work if you have it set to car charging mode. And it says here DC input source, PV or car. Make sure that's set to PV. And now we can shut the Blue Eddy off. Because if you have it set up on dual charging mode, as soon as you apply power, the Blue Eddy comes on by itself. Now, it won't do that with just the one charger. You have to have the charger plugged into the solar port because any power coming into the solar port will automatically turn the Blue Eddy on. But any power coming in through the regular port for charging from the wall outlet is not going to turn it on automatically. Now, I wanted to add that feature into the production model. However, they didn't have time to add that circuitry during the manufacturing process. So only the solar port is gonna turn this on automatically. And that's what's important anyway, because if you have this shut off and you have solar panels outside and the sun comes up in the morning, it automatically turns the Blue Eddy on and starts charging. So I have both of these hooked up to this power switch. I'm gonna go and turn the power switch on and you'll see right away, we get two green lights. The Blue Eddy turns on and it starts charging right away. And let me tell you, it's a pretty fast charge. So you can see here we got 400 watts coming in from the solar side and another 400 watts coming in from the AC power side. So with both chargers combined, you're now charging at 800 watts. So what's the big deal about charging at 800 watts? Well, that means you can charge this 2000 watt hour Blue Eddy from dead to full in under three hours. That to me is absolutely worth buying the second charger and hooking them both up because I really do like fast charging when it comes to AC power because I usually don't like to wait around for these things overnight to charge. Now I know other people are more patient than I am, but when it comes to AC charging, I like it quick. Now the only thing faster than this on the market that I know of is the EcoFlow Delta. Um, that will charge up in like two hours or less than two hours from pretty much dead to full. But that also has a lot smaller battery. In fact, that only has 1,000 watt hours usable. So it's half of what this is. And that's not lithium iron phosphate, this is. And that means that battery and the EcoFlow Delta, I think they rate it at um, 800 cycles to 60%. And this is rated at 3,000 cycles to 80%. So 
This is gonna last you years longer than an EcoFlow Delta. Now I'm gonna show you something really cool. I did demonstrate this in the original AC200 video showing you how to charge this at over 1,000 watts using your own charger. So I have this third-party charger right here, which is available at hobotech.tv slash Amazon. It is a 1,000 watt charger and it will actually pump 600 watts into this. Instead of getting one of these chargers, which I think they want 120 bucks for these, and I believe this was 80 bucks, but the thing is you have to wire it yourself. You have to find your own wires, put your own plug into it to plug it into the wall. It's just the charger, you gotta wire it yourself. So there's a little bit of work involved, but it'll save you some money and let you charge quicker. This has actually been a very popular option. A lot of people bought these because they do want that faster charging. So you can see there I have 606 watts coming in from the solar input and 391 coming in from the regular AC input. Now that noise you hear is the fan noise from the charger. It is not from the Blue Eddy. Just let you know that. This does get kind of loud. It does push out a thousand watts. So you have to expect it's got to cool itself down. And this setup works quite well. You can charge all day long with this charger. It's not gonna get hot or it's not gonna cause any damage or anything like that. But you do need to be aware, if you're gonna pump a thousand watts into this all the time, every time you charge it, it is going to take a little bit of life off the battery. Now, just a little bit. And since this is a lithium iron phosphate, who cares anyway? You're probably gonna get 5,000 cycles out of it pretty easy. Everything else on here will break long before you destroy the battery. As for the USB output rate check, the original test of the 60 watt power delivery port, we managed to pull five amps or over 70 watts out of it. So no problems there. And as for testing the wireless charging, I was able to do this last time, but the device I'm using can only support 10 watts of charging and these are 15 watt pads. So I really don't have any way at this time to test this, but it certainly did work for 10 watts of charging. Timeout under small loads. Now you can set the AC200P into eco mode and that will disconnect low power loads after four hours. If you don't want this to happen, make sure you turn eco mode off in the settings. And this thing has a plethora of fault codes built into it to help you troubleshoot any issues. There's literally several pages built into this. Also note the AC200P cannot be paralleled with other Blue Eddy products, nor does it have a UPS built in. It does support both AC and DC pass-through charging, so you can charge it while you use it. Now I wanna play an old clip for you guys from the original AC200 videos to show you how it could be charged with a lot of solar. Professor Hobo here. I've been trying for the last couple of days to get enough sunshine to do this test. So finally there's a break in the clouds for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna record and see how much power we can get from this solar panel array. I have three more 100 watt panels on the ground. I'm gonna go ahead and connect these all in series. I got Bouge RV 100 watt, 200 watt Renegies, four Bouge RV 170 watt panels all in series. That should give us around 150 volts. Let's see what we got. It's currently showing 585 watts, 110 volts, 5.2 amps. So we're getting almost 600 watts from the array right now, and that's not under perfect conditions. Yeah, it's hovering around 114 volts, 590 watts. So that's what we're getting from the seven solar panels. So there you have it, nearly 1,000 watts of solar going in to the AC200, and I'm getting about 600 out. Now again, it rained the last two straight weeks. It's the first break in the sun we got. That big cloud's about ready to move in. So this is the best I can do. By over paneling, you're guaranteed to at least, you know, get five or 600 watts. Like in this case, gives you a little bit more leeway when it comes to weather. And if you wanna know how long the AC200P will power your device, use the formula 1600 watt hours divided by the amount of watts that your device consumes, and that'll give you the number of hours it will run. There's no need to ask me in the comments how long your coffee maker, your air conditioner, or anything else will run. Just look on the device, it'll tell you the amount of power it uses, and just use that formula to figure out how many hours you can get off of one of these. So another major feature of this is the fact that it has a dedicated high amp output that you could run into a fuse box, allows you to run max air fans, LED lights, 
all kinds of stuff up to and just over 300 watts. Now, in order to access this port, however, you need to get their special cable from Blue Eddy. It does not come with this cable. You have to get this cable separately. Again, this was a perk from the original Indiegogo campaign. It's one of these aviation outputs to XT60, which you can plug in, clicks in there. It's nice and solid. This is this ain't coming out. You're gonna you're gonna break the cable before it'll come out. So you don't have to worry about this coming loose in your rig if it's shaking around and you're uh, off road. Unlike using like a cigarette lighter output, which you know you just a squirrel farts and it stops working. In this case, this is gonna keep working no matter what. XT60 is actually good for 60 amps. So you're not gonna have to worry about overloading this or overheating it or melting it or doing anything to it. In fact, this cable is very thick. You'd have a hard time cutting through it on accident. But you can use the XT60 connector out to a fuse box. Now you have to wire that yourself. This is a DIY style output. This is not for somebody who doesn't understand electricity or wiring or know how to strip cables and things like that. But you can also get with it this Anderson adapter. So it allows you to turn the XT60 into a little more common Anderson adapter. Now the Anderson adapters, they're good for 30 amps. So still you could run this to a fuse box or some kind of panel, make your own cable, basically make your own output for this and you can wire it to whatever you want. Do you want to run those max air fans? You want to run the LED lights? You want to run your water pump in your RV? You do it from this. You can't do it from this, but you can do it from this. And if you're thinking you can do that with a Jackery or even one of these older Blue Eddies, forget it because you're going to be limited to about 100 watts, 120 watts output maximum on the old Blue Eddy or a Jackery, but that's one of the most exciting features of the Blue Eddy AC200 and AC200P is the fact it's got this 25 amp DC output. And this is regulated too, so all the DC over here is regulated. So what do I like about this? Well, there's really nothing not to like about the Blue Eddy AC200P. You gain thousands of extra battery cycles, the safety of lithium iron phosphate. I mean, you can literally throw these batteries in the fire and they're not gonna explode. And you get 350 more usable watt hours. Also, the fact you can charge simultaneously from two different sources for a faster charging speed is fantastic. The inverter is rock solid and crazy powerful. It supports up to 150 volts and 700 watts of solar as demonstrated. And you can plug as much solar as you want into it. The Blue Eddy will automatically stop at 700 watts. Last but not least, the fantastic 25 amp DC output on this means you can hardwire this into a fuse box to power lights, fans, TVs, or whatever in your DIY rig up to 300 watts. So what don't I like about the AC200P? Well. The lack of quick charge ports have not been resolved yet, and this is likely the last major upgrade for the AC200 lineup. Of course, you can still fast charge devices using the power delivery port, or just use the wall charger in an AC outlet that came with your device. And also, the AC200P is pretty heavy. It may actually be too heavy for some at around 61 pounds. The DC overhead is also unchanged from the AC200, and again, is something we're probably not gonna get fixed in this model. It seems to be less of a concern now because the extra 350 watt hours of usable battery that you get, you can run lower wattage 12 volt devices like refrigerators and stuff quite a bit longer on that extra power. And note that this overhead is really only a concern if you plan to charge things low and slow. You can mitigate some of this overhead by charging more devices simultaneously. So instead of just plugging your phone into this, plug all your phones, all your tablets, computers, everything into it at once. And that way, the less you leave the DC circuitry on, the less power you're wasting. Now, as for the competition, there have been some heavy hitters in recent months trying to take a bite out of the Blue Eddy, but nearly all of them have fallen flat on their deliveries or their offerings one way or another. That makes the AC200P the current top dog. It's real, it's solid, you can actually buy the thing. Now do make note that the extra cables and the extra charger that I showed earlier in this video are not yet available for pre-order. Blue Eddy does tell me that accessories will be available probably sometime next month. So by the time you get your Blue Eddy, you can get that external 25 amp cable or the battery clamps to charge it from lead acid, the trolley, the bag, all those accessories should be coming in around next month. So who's this aimed at? 
This is aimed at somebody who wants a large all-in-one unit that can literally do it all. Anything that can be plugged into a household outlet can be plugged into the Blue Eddy. That means microwaves, air conditioners, residential refrigerators, washing machines, cooktops, toasters, coffee makers, induction cookers, instant pots, TVs, any kind of computer, including a gaming computer, gaming consoles, and ladies, listen to this, your hair dryer. Yeah, you heard me right. You can run your hair dryer on full blast on this Blue Eddy. And guys, tell the wife it'll run her hair dryer during the zombie apocalypse, and you'll get a very enthusiastic double thumbs up to get one. As for recommended solar panels, now Blue Eddy does sell their own solar panels, and they work perfectly fine with this. You can put a whole bunch of them in series, and they work just perfectly fine. Now, the AC200P is not designed with a single solar panel solution in mind. That means you need to run at least two solar panels in series if you plan to charge this from solar because it has that 35 volt minimum charge from the solar port. So if you're looking for recommendations on solar panels that are not Blue Eddy, go to hobotech.tv slash Amazon and look under solar kits. There's the Bouge RV 180 watt and 200 watt panels. They work great with the AC200P as well as the 100 watt flex panels and the portable panels I have listed there. Just make sure that you get at least two panels and you plan to hook them in series. Now you don't want anything with a solar controller like Dokio panels or the Renogy suitcase kits unless you know how to bypass that solar controller. I do have a video out showing you how to do that. Just don't forget you need at least two panels to charge this from solar unless you have residential panels which run from 24 to 48 volts in which case you'd only need to have the one residential solar panel. Now if you don't know what running solar panels in series means, watch the four videos below on the AC200 and I go through in depth how to charge it with solar from different kinds of solar and different configurations including series parallel and you can actually max the solar out on this with around 1000 to 1200 watts in most situations. So if you build a 1000 to 1200 watt solar array and plug that into this, you should at most times be able to charge at the max 700 watt rate. Now as for price of the Blue 80 AC200P, well, the original AC200 on Indiegogo, the price varied from $999 to $1599 towards the end of the campaign. Now this upgraded AC200P with a larger and more expensive lithium iron phosphate battery is going on pre-order today, 11-23-2020, for $17.99 when you use the link and the code in the description below. The normal price on this is $19.99, but with the link and code below, you can get it for $17.99, which is 200 bucks off. Prices and availability may vary. So if you want one at this price and any chance to get one before Christmas, I highly suggest that with all the shipping and stock issues that companies are dealing with right now, you probably don't wanna wait. And so what's that old timey saying, the early bird gets the sojen? Well, that's definitely the case here. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me a thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. Carbon dioxide emissions. I don't think this actually gives off any carbon dioxide, so I'm guessing that's how much carbon dioxide emission you save because this doesn't give any off. So I was kind of confused there, but there's the temperature. They did add Fahrenheit and Celsius to this on the screen, so that's one thing they changed, and they also fixed all the horrible typos they had in there originally. Developers, for some reason, never can spell. V Golf Guy, Z Foxfire, Jack Smith.